My name's Jonathan Shea. I'm the Teaching Fellow in Byzantine History, Sigillography and Numismatics at Dumbarton and Oaks, and one of my jobs is to look after the seals collection here. So the great thing about seals is that they really are a connection to the individuals that commissioned them. It's a connection to an actual Byzantine, and not necessarily an emperor or a terribly high-ranking person or the elite that we used to find in the history books, but someone who is a, a normal priest, a parish priest, or, or a bureaucrat, or, or a soldier. It's a connection to these people, and we don't often have that uh, from the Middle Ages. Well, when people think of a seal in the Middle Ages, they tend to think of a big blob of wax per document, and you stamp it, and that's seals as we put your design in. Uh, and technically, the thing that makes the impression is a seal. The thing that is produced, the wax, would be a sealing. In Byzantium, we use, uh, Byzantine studies, we use slightly different terminology. We, the thing that makes the impression, we use the Byzantine word, ulterior. The thing that is sealed is, is the impression that's made on, the, the lead we call a seal. So here we're seeing a seal still attached to its document, and it's an imperial golden seal, which is a, it's a crucible. Uh, and you can see the gold hanging from the, from the string that had been used to secure the document below the imperial signature here in red. It's the signature of the Emperor John VIII Palaeologus. Um, in the early 15th century, he went to Italy and he signed the agreements with the papacy, and that's what you can see. Every seal is basically someone or an institution's business card. It's a mixture of uh, business card and receipt stapled to a takeaway uh, meal that sort of validates what's inside, tells you what's in there, and keeps it safe. So it does all of these things. So if you want to look at the history of institutions, for instance, you can trace that on Byzantine seals. We can follow individuals' career paths on Byzantine seals. There is a chap from the early 8th century. We can follow him for working in the imperial stables through to being an imperial confidant until he's one of the highest ranking men in the empire. So this seal is a 10th century seal of a, a chap called George. And he's chosen to put St. George on one side of his seal. Obviously, there's a link there uh, to, to the name of the individual involved. But when we turn it over, we see from the inscription very square letters, very 10th century, that he was also curator of the imperial monastery, which was dedicated to St. George. So there's, there are two reasons why George appears on his seals. But this one's much more usual than the institutional seal you have. Uh, his name, his title, his office, it, it fits in there everything about him that makes him stand out in Byzantine society and the things that give him his standing in Byzantine society. Your seal has to tell the world everything you think is important about yourself. So there's a pretty standard formula for middle Byzantine seals, where you have your name and then your title, where you fit in the social hierarchy, uh, and then the job that you do. And then maybe later on bracketed by your family name. So that in that one little, you have about a square inch of, of, materi of material of lead, which is what they usually are, uh, to say everything that makes you you, everything that makes you important. So online, we have a growing catalog of thousands of seals from our collection, as well as two online exhibitions. We have an exhibition on the emperors on the seals, both a chronology and then a more thematic study, and one looking at uh, instances of New Testament imagery on seals. There are a handful of scenes from the New Testament, usually the great feastings, which make it onto seals. And we've put them in their textual context by pulling quotes from, from Byzantine texts uh, and put them online. So that's a great sort of in for people who want to know more about seals.